the Georgian Square to be completed in Dublin with a total of 69 houses. It's also the smallest and the best preserved. And it's the only square where the park remains private. Welcome to Fitzwilliam Square. As protected structures, the exteriors have remained largely intact, and these days the interiors are mainly converted into offices. So typically Dublin, this square is often seen as an attractive film set for the odd movie or even pop video. One of the great features about Georgian architecture is the uniformity and the way the buildings talk to one another. The uniformity is to do with the leases. They were dictated that they had to be made of brick. They had to be four stories over basement. So the only place the owners and architects had a chance to put their external mark on the houses were the wonderful door cases and columns and fan lights and doors, which are one of the glories of Dublin architecture. And of course, inside, they could express themselves as well. Inside, they could go mad, which they did. Wonderful plasterwork, wonderful joinery, quirky little things, and amazing what's inside this plain outside package. And outside the dining room here, we have an example of the butler's table, which is what it said. The butler would come along and leave the food there and go into the dining room um, to serve. It's a very good example of it. Mary, one of the most beautiful aspects of these houses are the, the first floor return landings. Yep, and they are uh, a mystery as well. <clears throat> Nearly every house has this very ornate space. Grand rooms were up on the first floor, the Piano Noble, and it could be that some guests were waiting here before they were brought up and introduced into the friends or whatever. But it's a mystery, but beautiful. They are good to see people sit here, just like we are. <laughs> Number 13, Fitzwilliam Square, was once my home. A very modest flat, the second floor from the top, but in very grand surroundings. And I always knew that in the square's 200-year history, that I was in the company of some very distinguished residents. Well, at the start, the impression would be that the houses were filled by members of the landed gentry and old peers. But Ireland was going through a transition after the Act of Union, and those peers were relocating to London. But gradually, the houses were filled by members of the professional classes who came and took up the houses uh, that were being vacated by the peers. There were any number of Lord Chief Justices and Attorney Generals. One house in particular, just behind us now on the east side, number five, had two Lord Chief Justices who lived in the 19th century. The first was Edward Pennyfather, and he tried Daniel O'Connell in 1844. And just after him, James Monaghan, he prosecuted the Young Islanders in 1848. But the remarkable thing is that number five was later used as a safe house and headquarters for ministers from the first Doyle, and de Valera in particular used to stay in number five. In fact, the house was raided by the British Army in 1921. Well, apart from all the professions that uh, lived in the square throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, there was also a great artistic community. Uh, Jackie Yates would be the most famous who had a studio in number 18 from 1929. But throughout the whole square, there were many famous artists. And the square is remarkable for its number of women artists, such as Rose Barton, Kitty Wilmer O'Brien, and Nora McGuinness, and of course, uh, Mamie Jellis of number 36. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 H
Well, I always say it's like living in the 19th century. The upside of it all is it's a beautiful, beautiful house. It's got a wonderful square across the way, and I just really love the city centre location. And the park is something truly unique. Unique in that it's a private park, Andrew. That's right. Access is still only granted to key holders. And they tend to be the residents who are still here, and then people who are still working in the offices in the square and in the adjoining streets. The garden is most famous for hosting the Irish tennis championships in the late 19th century. But it's actually very nice seeing it a little bit more open now. I mean, there are events in the park, and there's a regular lunchtime market, and that's really nice to see more people using it.